This video is going to show you how you can compare two means that have been ascertained through a within subjects design. So the same participants tested under two different conditions. I'm going to run two examples so you can see a t-test parametric and a non-parametric version using a Wilcoxon test. So the example we're looking at today is going to be based around my life at the moment and particularly these two characters here. Ivy, my daughter, who at the time of making this is only four weeks old, and Bill, my Dober Hound, half Doberman, half Whippet dog, who we recently adopted as well. And I'm going to do some analyses based upon their impact on my life. So if we look at these first two columns in the data set, this is simply uh, we've got 23 participants who recently had a baby. And then we're looking at the number of hours of sleep they had on average before they had a baby and now the number of hours sleep on average they have after having a baby. The second example is this here and this is based around a sample of 23 people who recently adopted a Dober hound and what we asked them is how many miles on average a week did you walk before you got your dog and then how many miles on average do you walk after getting your dog. So we're going to do two paired samples tests, one looking at sleep before and after having a baby and one looking at miles walked before and after adopting a Dober hound. So the first one we'll look at, we'll look at miles before and miles after. You can just look at this data now and you can see, well, it does seem pretty likely that there's going to be a big significant increase in miles walked after compared to before. Let's test this. So we go to t-test and then paired samples t-test. By default it's going to give you a student's t-test but we're just going to unclick that. So the first thing that we're going to look at is we are going to check the assumptions first. Because this is going to dictate whether we do a paired samples t-test or a Wilcoxon signed rank test. This for if our data has a normal distribution and this for it if it does not. So we click across our pair that we're interested in and we ask for all normality check. So it does a Shapiro Wilk test and we want this test to be non significant. So if this is non significant, this means that we have a normal distribution of our data. Therefore, we can use the student t test. It looks at the distribution of the difference between the conditions. Because we've met this assumption, you can click student t-test and you can see it automatically populates our results here, gives us our t-statistic, the degrees of freedom and the p-value. So as you can see, we've got a hugely statistically significant difference between the two conditions here. Our t-statistic is very large as well. Before we write this up, we could ask for some more information though, and of course we should ask for our effect size. So this gives us our Cohen's D. We know this is a very large effect, and here's the criteria for different effect sizes and Cohen's D, and as you can see, we're way over, way, way over the limit for a large effect. So we're seeing a really huge difference in the impact of adopting a Dober Hound has on your miles walked. So just so we can illustrate this further, we can look at our descriptive statistics and you can see here the mean and the standard deviation for our two conditions. And as you can see, we've got beforehand average six miles per week after 12 miles. And then we can see our standard deviations and our standard error for that as well. We could also ask for our des um, descriptive plots. So it's quite clear here that there is a, a huge difference in miles walked before and after. It's a relatively neat graph. We also could ask for confidence intervals. If you're going to ask for confidence intervals, you need to get your mean difference up as well. Otherwise, you lose a little bit of context here because the confidence intervals here refer to the mean difference. So we click mean difference. So that's the mean difference between the two conditions. As you can see, there's the difference between those two statistics there. So there's your mean difference. And then we get our confidence intervals. And that's the confidence intervals for this. So we can get a full range of statistics there. Um, I'm just going to drop that away 
to this and we could just write up our results as participants walk significantly more miles per week after adopting a Dover Hound and then we report our T statistic along with its degrees of freedom, our P value and of course we give our Cohen's D as well. It's a relatively straightforward procedure. So what about sleep? So the differences in our sleep before and after having a baby. We'll just have normality check. Click there, nothing else. Sleep before, sleep after, so see our normality check. Now it's statistically significant. So this suggests that we don't meet the assumptions of the paired sample t-test of the student's t-test. So instead we're going to ask for our Wilcoxon signed rank, which is the non-parametric equivalent. So we tick on that, and as you can see, we've got a highly statistically significant difference between the conditions. Let's ask for a few more bits of information, get our descriptives. And as you can see, the mean hours slept goes down from 7.35 to 5.26. We could also ask for our effect size as well. It'll give us a Cohen's D. Again, we've got a large effect here. We could also get our mean difference and, of course, the confidence intervals for this mean difference if we wish to. It's probably worth noting that the mean difference here doesn't refer to the actual raw mean difference that you've got here. If you subtract that from that, it's not going to give you 2.5. So these actually, the mean difference and the confidence intervals refer to the mean difference in the ranks rather than the absolute mean difference in the scores. And we can also get our descriptive plot so you can see the big decline in sleep. So if we just redact this down a little bit, so we can. So if we're going to write this up, we could just simply say, after having a baby, participants' hours of sleep per night significantly decreased, and we can put the Wilcox and W, the p-value, and the Cohen's d.